Hey, it's Ben Hassel here today, and today we're going to have a look at what happens when you get a logo uh, that has a background on it that you want to remove. So this might be a circular logo or a different shaped logo, um, and basically uh, it may have been flattened into a JPEG image or a PNG, um, and there may be a white background that you need to get rid of. So we're going to have a look at a couple of different ways in which you can either key out or mask out um, the background of that logo so that you can have it as transparent on your timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. Now this channel is all about tips and tricks for Final Cut Pro 10 and if you're interested in that then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button um, to get updates whenever I post a new video. Otherwise let's dive straight into it and look at how we knock out the background uh, from a logo in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're going to dive in here and look at a couple ways in which we can knock out the white background um, of this image. So whether you've got a logo or an image in a circle or other shape, um, this will help you to knock out that background so you can have it as transparent uh, in Final Cut Pro 10. Now a lot of the time when you get a logo it may have been flattened to a JPEG or a PNG um, where the image or the logo used to have transparency but where that's been knocked out somewhere along the way to the image or logo um, getting to you. So this will help you out if you have an image like that that you'll need to put into your edit. So we're going to have a look at the, the first method um, for doing this and really the focus of this is on the, the keying um, and masking tools that we have down here in our effects panel. So before we get started actually we're going to go to window, workspaces and go to the default. And once we're in the default workspace we'll just come along to the right hand side and we bring up the effects panel here and as I mentioned we're going to be looking at the keying and masking tools. So we'll look at the keying tool first um, and this is great if you have an image uh, like this where the white background is quite different um, to the color inside your image so there's no pure white um, in the middle of this circular image here so we should be able to quite easily knock out the background um, using a color key or a luma key. So we're going to grab the, the luma key here and drag this onto our image here. And once you've done that, um, all the information that we need to change will pop up in our inspector on the right. So we're in the video tab of our inspector. So you can see here, we're getting some transparency uh, in the middle of our image. And really what we wanna do is isolate the white parts of this image. So I'm gonna come to my Luma selection here and just make it so that I'm highlighting just that very white part of the image. Okay, so basically we've knocked out the, the reverse of what we actually wanna keep. Uh, and you can see we're getting some little shadows of that image there. And then once we've got this so it's completely invisible, if we click invert, then we've basically knocked out the background to that. We can also, um, if we come down, we have some matte tools as well where we can shrink and expand. Um, and we're kind of doing the reverse of this because we've inverted it. So instead of shrinking our selection, um, we need to expand it um, so that the inverse um, is gonna be right. So basically now you can see we've knocked out the background um, to that white shape and we've got our logo um, in the middle there. And we can do things like soften the edges as well if we need to um, and also work with the, the contrast um, as well to try and get a nice uh, knocked out uh, image there. If we go to these options here, we can kind of see how clean that cutout is. Now, once we've done that, we can come back to the, the main image here so we can flick between these different kind of composite modes to see how clean our mask is. So it should be a nice kind of clean black and white image. We'll come back to this. If we want to move this logo around, then we would grab the transform tool here and we can now rescale it and move it around and position it as we need to. So we're using the same image uh, for this second option here along the timeline, but we're going to do this slightly differently. So we're going to use uh, a mask for this instead of the Kia. And you do this, um, for instance, if you didn't have a kind of pure white background, so you couldn't use that Luma key or that color key as easily to kind of knock out the background. So we're going to use the, the shape mask here. Um, and at the moment, it doesn't really look like it's going to work to knock out the background of this image. But if we drag it on to our timeline, Okay, we can make some changes that are gonna help this to work. So we're gonna change our curvature to uh, 100%. So all the way up. We're gonna turn down the feather to zero. In fact, we'll just type in a zero there so we get a nice kind of sharp edge there. Uh, and then if we go to the radius at the top here, I'm just gonna open this up by clicking this little arrow to the left of radius. We can match the X and Y width and height. So basically we want the width um, to match the width of our circle 
and we want the height to do the same as well. So these should be exactly the same. So I'm just going to type in 722 and 722 there. And then I can use, I need to turn off my motion transform tool here so I can move around this selection. And you can see now we're getting very close to what we want. So if we just drop this down to 720 and 720 for that perfect circle, then we can get this into exactly the right spot. So once we've done that, um, if we click away to one or other tools, we can see more clearly that we've still got that little bit of white background there. Um, so I'm going to come into my X value and just use my cursor, the down cursor, just to reduce that width a little bit until I've trimmed off all the edge. So 717 at the moment looks like a good width. And then to reselect and reposition this, I'm going to click back on the shape mask and that will give me this uh, option to kind of move this around and reposition that shape tool. And we can click back to compositing. And we'll actually go down to 715 and 715 okay. um, we'll just reposition this a little bit so again if we click away from the shape mask we can come to the transforms down here and here we can nudge the position of our circle as well so we can get that cut out to be perfect so we can either type in a number here or just use the up and down cursors to nudge that circle into position so you can see here I still got a little bit of white up at the top so I'm gonna nudge this down and that's looking pretty good so now again we can grab the transform tool and we can transform it down and we have a nice cutout version of our logo with a transparent background one other thing that you might want to do um, once you've actually cut out your background a useful effect just to kind of help your image uh, pop um, is to add um, a drop shadow onto there so if we click on our video effects or all of our video effects we can type in drop here and we get this drop shadow option that we can drag down to the timeline and now we can work on the opacity and positioning of that so we have it in exactly the spot that we want to so we've got some nice different options there for modifying that drop shadow and you can see it just helps it to kind of pop out a little bit from the background. So I hope that's useful, a uh, kind of quick tip about how to knock out the background of a circular logo here. When we're working um, with the shape tools here, um, you can see we can also dial that curvature right back down as well. So we can actually change the radius of this and make it into a rectangle as well. So if you have those different kinds of shapes to work with, then you can still chop them out um, using these tools. If you have more complex shapes um, to work with, then in the masking tools, we also have, and I'll just clear my search here, uh, the draw mask tool where we can draw around more complex objects, almost like a dot to dot Bezier curve um, around that. And that's gonna give you an easy way to cut out those kind of more advanced shapes. So again, hopefully this has been useful. Um, if you have any questions about Final Cut Pro 10, then please do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial um, and thanks for checking the channel out.